I'm going to share to you a message about eight, uh, eight habits of a godly life. I'm going to read, But know that the Lord hath set apart him that is godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call unto him. And also in Psalms chapter 12 verse 1 says here, Help Lord for the godly man ceaseth. For the faithful fail from among the children of men. And Psalms chapter 32 verse 6. For this shall everyone that is godly pray unto thee in a time that thou mayest be found. Surely in the floods of great waters they shall not come nigh unto thee. In, in chapter 12 verse 1, sinasabi po dito, Help Lord for the godly man ceaseth, for the faithful fail from among the children of men. Uh, as Christians, we want to live a godly life. Ibig po nating mamuhay na matuwid at kalugod-lugod sa ating Panginoon. The question is, do you want to live a godly life? And there are times when we as Christians do fail to live a godly life at hindi po natin uh, nagagawa yung ating mga tungkulin uh, we need to develop the right habits mahalaga po na ma-develop natin at magawa po natin yung tamang habits bilang uh, manampalataya and so Meron pong walo na ibig kong galing sa inyo na dapat po ito po yung ating magiging uh, habits if you want to live a godly life. Yung una po is about prayer. If you want to live a godly life, you must maintain regular prayer. Mahalaga po yung panalangin we must set uh, a time for us to regularly pray to the Lord. Ang sabi nga sa Bible, sabi nga dito, seven times do I praise thee. Now, how, how many times do you pray? Ilang beses ka na nangalangin. When you wake up in the morning, and then, when you eat your breakfast, then when you take your lunch, and then, during supper, or before you take your meal and supper, before you sleep, and between meals, meron pang snacks. Pray ka rin, pasalamat sa Panginoon. Mahalaga po yung parati tayong nananalangin O siguro more than seven times or pwede baka isang magpipray ka tatlong beses lang bawat kain pero mas maganda yung more than seven times kasi sabi ka ng psalmist seven times do I do I praise thee now in the Bible we can find an illustration where Jesus prayed in Mark chapter 1 verse 35 Mark chapter 1 verse 35 And prayer has been the backbone of the ministry of our Lord Jesus. And according to Mark chapter 1 verse uh, verse 35 says here And in the morning rising up a great while before day he went out and departed into a, solit a solitary place and there prayed. So rising up a great while before day, bago, bago sumikat yung araw, Jesus prayed. Pumunta siya sa isang lugar in a solitary place and there prayed. So you see, Jesus always had a habit of Praying to the Father. Bawat umaga. 
At makita din natin sa Luke chapter 4 In verse 42 It says here And when it was day He departed and went into a desert place And the people sought him And came unto him and stayed him That he should not depart from them And he said unto them I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also For therefore am I sent And you will notice that this was after the activity of Jesus. Marami siyang pinagaling. Maraming mga uh, mga nakasukan ng, ng evil spirit. And then, pinagaling ng ating Panginoon. So, he was so exhausted. Pagod siya. Pero still, he has the time to pray. After the activity, after the ministry, he went to a desert place. He had time alone with the Father. Now, in Luke chapter 11, Luke chapter 11, verse, verse 1, because of the example of Jesus, dahil sa halimbawa ng ating Panginoon, in verse 1 and it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place when he ceased one of his disciples said unto him Lord teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples the lifestyle of Jesus became a motivation for others especially for his disciples they were motivated to learn to pray sila mismo ang nagsabi kay Jesus Teach us to pray. Minsan ang hirap magturo sa iba kung hindi sila motivated. But then this time, because of the example of the Lord Jesus, they became interested in learning how to pray. Mas maganda yung tinuturuan mo na higing interesado kaysa yung hindi interesado. So sa buhay ni Jesus, he had this good example of praying always. That is the habit of Jesus. And that develops uh, develops his disciples to desire also to learn how to pray. So makita natin dito, mahalaga talaga ang prayer mga kapatid. Ano ba ang sabi sa 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17? Pray without ceasing. As a godly person, do you spend time in prayer? How many times do you pray? Ilang beses ka nananalangin? So how many times do you pray? Do you really set aside a time to pray regularly to the Lord? Another habit that is important for us as Christians is not only to pray but also to regularly meditate on God's Word. Mahalaga po yung parati tayong nag-meditate sa salita ng Panginoon. Kasi yan po ang principle ng success. Makita po natin sa Psalms chapter 1. Psalms chapter 1 verse 1 and 2. It says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law that he meditate day and night. You see, binanggit pa dyan, meditation is uh, to be done day and night. Umaga at gabi. No? that we are not to be influenced by ungodly people. Ganito po yun. Dalawang klase pong influensya. Merong influensya na nasa na, nasa sanlibutan. Influensya ng sanlibutan. Or influensya ng salita ng Panginoon. You will either be influenced by the world or by the word. Now, saan ba ang gusto mong mag-i-influensya sa'yo? Is it the word 
or the world. Now, the Bible says in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind the you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Palaga po na parati tayong nagme-meditate upang yung ating mind ay ma-renew parati. No? Kasi po yung mind natin maaring uh, parating iniisip yung problema, no? parating naguguluhan, because dito po sa mundo, marami pong kaguluhan. At pag bukas mo sa TV, kita mo na ang mga, mga bad news, no? mga masasamang balita, punta ka sa, sa cellphone, sa internet. Uh, maraming mga masasamang balita, maraming mga, mga pangyayari, lalo na panahon ng COVID. No? Maraming mga masasamang nangyari. Parati mong uh, mapabasa yan ano? sa newspaper sa internet, sa sa cellphone, sa TV. So, puro, puro bad news parati. Oh, you have to give yourself time to listen to good news, to God's Word, upang ma-renew yung ating mind, magkaroon tayo ng kalakasan. Sabi nga sa Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31, sabi nga, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, they shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Teach me, Lord. Teach me, Lord, to wait. So, ano pang lakas natin para uh, harapin ang mga problema? Para magawa natin yung ating mga responsibility. Kailangan natin ng lakas galing sa ating Panginoon. We need to regularly meditate upon God's Word. Find strength in God's Word. Now, in Psalms chapter 63, it says here, Psalms chapter 63, sabi nga dito, uh, in Psalms chapter 63, verse 1, O God, Thou art my God, early will I seek Thee, my soul thirsteth for Thee, my flesh longeth for Thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Minsan, kung puro problema, parang nauuhaw ka, no? parang dry ka. No? Sabi nga, sabi pa nga niya, early will I seek thee. You know, you are being watered kapag nakarinig ka ng word of God. Parang nare-refresh ka. No? Sabi nga ng psalmist, early will I seek thee, a son of David, to see thy power and thy glory, so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary, Sabi sa verse 3, Because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. So, sabi nga niya dito, to see the power and thy glory. How, how, how will you see the glory, the power of God? Unless you are regularly meditating sa sakita ng Panginoon. At kung tunay nga na you are so grateful sa loving, loving kindness ng Panginoon, you would always give time to meditation, to praising God, uh, to uh, to blessing God. Sabi nga dito, uh, because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Kasi git yung loving kindness ng ating Panginoon. Kasi po, lahat dito sa mundo, even the best car, car of the year, Pagkasunod na year, hindi na siya best car. No? So, siguro kung ikumpara mo siya sa ibang mga cars, mas maganda siya sa, sa year na yan. Pero pagka the following year, siguro after 2 years, after 3 years, bulok na. No? Kinakalawang na. O kahit sinong pinakamaganda, maraming mga artista ang ganda. Pero later on, tumanda. Tapos, lahat ng tao na mamatay. So, kahit gaano makaganda, kukulubot pa rin yung mukha. So, ibig sabihin, ang loving kindness ng ating Panginoon is better than life. Kasi sa buhay dito sa mundo, 
merong merong corruption, merong pagkabulok, merong deterioration, wala namang taong nananatiling uh, physically strong. No? Wala na na, taong nananatiling parati siyang maganda. Walang taong manatiling no? parati siyang malusog. Hindi natin may iwasan dumadating yung deterioration. Pag matanggalan ka ng ngipin, hindi mo na maibalik. No? Pwede malagyan mo ng postizo, pero may mga instance na hindi mo na pwedeng maibalik. Pag mabalian ka ng kamay, minsan, hindi, ano na, hindi na straight ang kamay mo. Masemento man, pero may problema. No? Buti lang yung sasakyan. Pwede ka makabili ng pyesa. Kasi, we are going to deteriorate. And eventually, there is an end to life. Pero yung loving kindness ng Panginoon is better than life. Napakaganda na when you meditate, you spend time to to uh, meditate with the Lord, to talk with the Lord, to talk to the Lord, and to hear God's Word uh, through meditation. Pag nagbibigay ka ng time, you will grow. You will experience the loving kindness of the Lord. Kaya nga, sabi nga dito sa Psalms chapter 63, My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips, when I remember thee upon my bed, and meditate on thee in the night watches. Because thou hast been my help, therefore in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. My soul followeth hard after thee, thy right hand upholdeth me. Okay, lukin na natin dito. When I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches. Now, before you sleep, what is it? What is it? Uh, what is the last thing that you will do? O ano ba pinaka-last activity? What will be your last activity? Or what is the last thing that you will remember? Before you sleep, bago ka matulog, ano ba ang pinaka, pinaka last uh, na pumasok sa isip mo? No? Ano ba? Maaring yung pumasok sa isip mo yung palabas ng TV. Bago ka natulog, no? yun, pinaka last na ginawa mo is to turn off the TV. Kasi yun lang. Or pinaka last na ginawa mo is ng Facebook. Ano man dapat pinakalas bago ka matulog o pa? Maalala mo ang Panginoon, papasok sa iyong subconscious. Bago ka matulog, yung Word of God, papasok sa iyong mind. At sa, sa, may tago ng iyong heart, may tago ng iyong subconscious para pagising mo, you wake up with a praising attitude. Di ba dapat yung, yung pumapasok sa mind natin bago tayo matulog? is Word of God. Ano ang pinapasok mo sa iyong mind? Bad news ba? Problema ba? Puro ba mga problema sa mundo? No? Puro ba mga uh, mga uh, halong kasinungalingan? No? Mga gawa-gawa lang na istorya. Pwede kumiyak ka doon sa istorya ng gawa-gawa lang ng tao. No? Pero masyadong dinibdib mo pag tulog mo. Yun pa rin ang iniisip mo. Yung istorya niyo. No? Pero fiction lang yun. Hindi yun totoong, hindi yun katotohanan. Pero kung bago ka natulog, yung Word of God, ang binigyan mo ng panahon, you meditated on God's Word, di ba ang sarap? That is the habit of a godly man. That is the habit of uh, a Christian. Yun dapat ang habit ng, ng Christian. Meditation, not only before, not only in the morning, but also in the evening. Pwede mo naman i-repeat yung verse or panibagong verse. No? But we need to, to talk to God and to hear God's word. Ang sabi sa Bible, Proverbs chapter 28, verse 9, He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be abomination. Pag hindi ka nakikinig sa salita ng Panginoon, yung iyong panalangin ay Uh, kasuklam, kasuklam, suklam. So, makita natin ang mahalaga ang meditation. Now, 
focus on verse 6 of Psalms chapter 63. Sabi nga dito, When I remember thee upon my bed, and meditate on thee in the night watches. So before you sleep, before you sleep, meditate on God's word. And then here is the promise, My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. Diba ang saya? You can praise God. How can you praise God without meditation? Kung puno ka nga ng problema, kung naiinis ka sa mundo, naiinis ka sa mga tao, no? paano ka makapagpasalamat sa Panginoon? Okay. Now, i-review natin, ano? Prayer. Ano an yung unang nabanggit ko? Uh, prayer. Then, pangalawa, meditate. Okay, pangatlo. Dito tayo sa pangatlo. Then you have to trust God. You have to trust God. Mahalaga po yung uh, pagtitiwala sa Panginoon. Kasi po, uh, yung Christian, we're not going to live by feelings. If you're going to live by feelings, our feelings goes up and down. Sometimes up, sometimes down. We are to live by, by faith. So Galatians chapter 3 verse 11 it says the just shall live by faith and faith means trust now, how can you please God without faith Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 in Asabi, without faith it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him mahalaga po yung pananampalataya mga kapatid Kasi po, kapag wala tayong pananampalataya, nagdududa tayo, we cannot please God. So, let it be a habit na tayo ay parating nag-exercise, nagtitiwala sa Panginoon. We exercise faith. Parating tayong nagtitiwala sa Panginoon. So, anong sabi sa Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Do not lean on your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge Him and He shall direct thy paths. So, kahit minsan mahirap unawain, mahalaga po yung pagtitiwala sa Panginoon. Even in times of problems, kahit panahon ng problema, kasi hindi naman tayo papapayaan ng Panginoon. Still, dapat tayo magtiwala sa Panginoon. You know, in Romans 8.28, sinasabi, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. So, even in times of problems, you just have to trust God. When you cannot explain everything that happens, when things go bad, minsan you expect good things and then it turned out to be unfavorable circumstance. Still, you have to trust God. Because, Sabi nga, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He shall direct thy paths. Mahalaga po, mga kapatid, na parati tayong nagtitiwala sa Panginoon. Ito yung tanong, nagtitiwala ka ba sa Panginoon? Are there times na nagdududa ka sa Panginoon, nagdududa ka sa Word of God? Mahirap kasi i-obey ang Word of God without faith. Now, another point na dapat natin gawin kung tayo ay nagtitiwala sa Panginoon is obedience. So, that should be a habit. Yung obedience. Hindi lamang sinasabi natin na may pananampalataya tayo. Kundi, pinapakita natin yung ating pananampalataya sa magita ng pagsunod. Ano ba ang sabi sa James chapter 1 verse 22? Uh, be the words of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Eh, dapat tagagawa tayo ng salita ng Panginoon, hindi tagapakinig lamang. Now ay mapakinggan natin at maunawaan natin itong habits ng, ng godly person. Ay ma- isabuhay talaga natin na magawa natin itong habits nito. That we make it a habit. 
We always pray. We always meditate. Uh, then we always believe or trust in the Lord always. So, pahalaga yung obedience. Pagsunod. Ang sabi ng Panginoon sa John chapter 14 verse 15, If you love me, keep my commandments. Nagugro kasi tayo pag sinusunod natin. Kapag hindi natin sinusunod, hindi tayo lumalago. Kung hanggang head knowledge lamang tayo, paano tayo lalago? So, mahalaga po yung pagsunod. So, as Christians, we need to be obedient to God's Word. Now, let, let us see in in uh, here in the autonomy, uh, sabi nga dito, chapter 27. Okay. Verse 10. Sabi nga dito, Thou shalt therefore obey the voice of the Lord thy God and do His commandments and His statutes which I commanded this day. And observe in chapter 28 verse 1. And it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments which I commanded this day that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And notice in verse, verse 2, And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God Oh, do you believe? Do you believe God's promises? Although ito ay sinabi sa Israel, sa nation sa Israel, pero we can learn that if you are obedient to the Word of God, it is God who will set thee on high. Just like what He did to Israel, or what He promised to Israel, All these blessings shall come on thee. At binanggit, I commanded this day that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Now, this could mean also that it is God who will put us on a higher level. Ang Panginoon ang siyang magkataas sa iyo. Kung maging masunurin ka, Remember James chapter 4 verse 6 God resisted the proud but giveth grace unto the humble. Kung nagmamayabang ka na hindi mo kailangan ng Panginoon, ibababa ka ng Panginoon. Pero kung nagpapakumbaba ka at naging masus- masunurin ka sa Kanya, itataas ka naman niya. Now this is related sa sa 1 Peter. Tingnan natin sa 1 Peter. Uh, tingnan natin dito sa 1 Peter chapter 5. Verse, verse 5, sabi nga dito, Likewise ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder, yet all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility, for God resisted the proud, and give it grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due time. Meron pong due time. Meron pong timetable ang Panginoon. Paring mainip ka na... Uh, Kaya iniisip mong hindi mo nakakamit yung pagpapala ng Panginoon. But God wants you to wait just to trust in Him and to obey Him. Mahalaga po yung pagsunod sa ating Panginoon. So kapag hindi mo sinusunod ng Panginoon, dinadaya mo ang iyong sarili. Be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Ito po yung katanungan kung sa puso mo ba, do you want to live a godly life? Do you want to obey God's principles. Do you want to obey God's word? Mahal na po yung obedience po natin. And then, ilan, ilan na yun? Apat na yun? No? Okay? Another thing is, have a praising attitude. May tatlo na lang. At ano yung una? Prayer. Prayer. Meditation. Faith. Trust in the Lord, that is faith. No? And then, obedience. Obedience to the Lord. And then, uh, have a praising attitude. 
Mahalaga po yung you have a praising and thankful attitude. I-practice po natin. Yun ang sabi nga ng psalmist na, na seven times a day do I praise thee. Now, in in uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 18, sabi nga dito, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Huwag mong pahintulutan na papasok yung bitterness, hatred. Huwag mong, papa, huwag mong pahintulutan papasok sa puso mo. Alam mo kung matulog ka na puno ka ng hatred, bitterness, hindi ka makatulog eh. Apektado yung isip mo. Kaya mahalaga po yung uh, you have peace. Now, tingnan natin sa Bible, sa Philippians chapter Philippians chapter 4 Sabi nga dito Philippians chapter 4 Verse 4 Rejoice in the Lord always And again I say rejoice And then verse 6 Be careful for nothing but in everything By prayer and supplication With thanksgiving Let your request be made known unto God Hindi nawawala yung thanksgiving Pasalamat parati sa Panginoon Be careful sa ibang pagka-translate, uh, do not be anxious. So, do not worry, do not be anxious. That will result to anxiety. But rather, do not worry. In everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Sabi nila, pag hindi ka daw makatulog, magbibilang ka ng tupa. lumulundag no? magbibilang ka ng tupa ng lumulundag hanggang makarating ka ng 100 what about counting your blessings no? instead of problems pag ang daming problem iniisip mo you will be so stressed no? problema lalo kang uh, mamumong problema so ano ba ang dapat gawin count your blessings sabi nga sa abit count your blessings name them one by one Now, notice in verse 7, And the peace of God, Okay, be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So, andyan ang pagpapala at kapayapaan ng Panginoon. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, Now, sabi nga dito sa verse 19, But my God shall supply all your need according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So, make it a practice to always thank God, to always praise God. Kahit ba problema, yes, if you trust God, you can still praise God, you can still thank God, even if there are problems. There is a song that says, And I thank you, Lord, and I thank you, and I thank you, Lord. For the trials that comes, that come my way. So, you can thank God even for trials. Because when you thank God, that means you are trusting Him that He is in control. Okay, mahalaga po yung pasalamat. Ano? Pasalamat parati sa Panginoon. Huwag kalimutan. Minsan, when you pray, hindi mo pa, hindi mo pa nakamit, pinapasalamatan mo na. O minsan nga ako, pag nag-drive ako, uh, nag-pray ako na sana may, may parking area pa sa pupuntahan ko. O minsan sa kalsada lang nagpa-parking. And then pinapasalamatan ko na ang Panginoon. Hindi pa nga nag-run, pinapasalamatan ko na ang Panginoon. Pagdating ko doon, may space pa na mapaparkingan. Okay, another point is dependence on the Holy Spirit. Now, we are to... depend on the Holy Spirit. Mahalaga po yung pagdidepende natin sa sa Holy Spirit. Ano? So, uh, ayon sa Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18, sabi nga dito. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18. Sabi pa dito, And be not drunk with wine where it is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Yung word na filled, it means uh, be controlled or be under the influence. 
Just like when a, pers when a person is filled with anger, he is under the control of his anger. So when a person is filled with wine, he is under the influence of a liquor, or he is under the control of the wine. Kaya nga, ang sabi pa dito, be not drunk with wine. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Now, what is the result? Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, what is the result of being filled, being controlled, being empowered by the Holy Spirit? There is, uh, there is a song in your heart. You always want to praise God. Gusto mong parating magpapasalamat sa Kanya. So, mahalaga yung, yung uh, puspos ka ng Holy Spirit. And in fact, kahit may takot ka, you will have the courage. Tingnan natin sa Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. Ito, they were threatened. Sa buhay po natin, minsan hindi natin naiwasan. Marami pong mga bagay na uh, natatakot tayo ano? o kinatatakutan natin. And then, uh, even in doing things that uh, things that are right, mga, da mga dapat mong gawin, minsan hindi mo magawa because natatakot ka. Kung titingnan natin sa uh, Acts chapter 4, verse 29, it says here, And now, Lord, behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word. Now, they were, they were threatened. They were uh, forbidden to preach. They were hindered to preach. But they prayed. Verse 31, And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. Primero, andyan yung takot sa kanila, but after they have prayed, they became bold, they became courageous to preach God's word. Makita natin na uh, when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you are so courageous, you are so bold, hindi ka na nahihiya. Ano? You see, kung ang tao uh, under the influence of a liquor, uh, control siya ng alak, hindi siya nahihiya gumawa ng masama. Pag ang tao naman, puspos ng Holy Spirit, hindi rin siya nahihiya gumawa ng tama. Gumawa ng kalooban ng Panginoon. So when you are filled and controlled by the Holy Spirit, that means you are courageous to do God's will. Gagawin mo yung tama. Hindi yung gagawin mo yung mali. If you are so carnal, gagawin mo yung mali. We must be courageous to do what is right, not to do what is wrong. So, lahat ng mga manapalagaya ay merong Holy Spirit. Kasi pag tinanggap mo si Jesus, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit. Ayon sa Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13, all Christians are indwelt by the Holy Spirit. According to Romans chapter 8 verse 9, you are not in the flesh but in the Spirit if so be that the Spirit of God dwells in you. If any man uh, have not the Spirit of Christ, If any man had not the, the Spirit of Christ, he is not of his. So kapag wala yung Holy Spirit sa iyo, you are not saved. But not all Christians are filled or controlled by the Holy Spirit. So paano mo makontrol? You, you confess your sins and you yield yourself to the Lord. You submit, uh, you submit to the Lord in obedience to Him. So be filled with the Holy Spirit. Yield your life. Yield your life to, to God. Surrender your life to the Lord. Dedicate your life to Him. Trust in Him. Confess our sins to the Lord. Parang, parang physical breathing. You, you inhale the pure, you exhale the impure. Magaroon din sa being filled with the Holy Spirit, you confess your sins, and then you trust God. You yield your life to the Lord. Okay. And then, Another point, no? another point, maybe this is the last point, no? so, uh, ang manampalataya, ito pa lang, okay, so, ito pa lang, ano ba yun, uh, una is, um, 
uh, prayer. Second, meditation. Third is faith. Trusting. Trusting in Jesus. Habit of trusting in Jesus. Fourth is obedience. Fifth is uh, praising God. Pasalamat. Okay. Sixth is dependence on the Holy Spirit. And then, uh, seven is forgiving. Forgiveness. Uh, be forgiving. Tignan po natin dito sa Ephesians chapter, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26. Sabi nga dito. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26. It says here, Be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Okay. Be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Kasi ang utos ng Panginoon is alisin yung bitterness, wrath, anger. And you can find it also in in verse 30, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. You see, it is um, it is hard or difficult to imagine that a person who has experienced God's forgiveness cannot forgive others. You see, if you are a Christian, you want to live a godly life, forgiving others should be a habit. No? It should be a habit. Kasi kung napuno ka ng galit, eh, nagkakasala ka, sabi dito, be angry and sin not. Kung nagtatago ka o nagikimkim ka ng galit, ang tawag doon, uh, nagtatago ka ng grudge, ano? let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Kaya yung bitterness, wrath, and anger, and clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. You cannot live a godly life if there is an unforgiving spirit in your heart, that you are unforgiving. Tingnan natin sa Colossians chapter 3 verse uh, Colossians chapter 3 Colossians chapter 3 verse 13 says here verse 12, put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness long suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another if any man have a quarrel against any even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And, ab and above all these things, put on charity, which is the blood of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. You say, paano ka magkakaroon ng kapayapaan sa iyong puso kung puno ng hatred, bitterness, and wrath sa iyong puso? So we are being commanded to forgive. Sabi nga sa prayer, uh, sa tinuro ng ating Panginoon, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lalo na if you are betrayed, you trusted, and you were betrayed. But you see, that is what Judas Iscariot did to Jesus. And yet, Jesus said, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. Yung ginawa kay Jesus, binutbog, binuraan, Anong sabi ni Jesus? Forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. Pero alam niyo, si Judas Iscariot, hindi talaga save yun. Kasi, nagrepent siya, pero wala siyang pananampalataya. So, mahalaga talaga yung pananampalataya. Ito yung point. Yung Christian is, should, uh, should forgive. Christian should forgive if he is to live dependent life to the Lord. Okay. There is the last one. Is give to God. Luke chapter 6. Uh, Luke chapter 6 verse 38 Luke chapter 6 verse 38 
Give, and it shall be given unto you good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over. Shall men give into your bosom, or with the same measure that ye meet without, it shall be measured to you again. So the point is, give to God. Give to God. You can never outgive the Lord. The more you give to the Lord, the more God gives to you. Because sabi pa dito, Verse 3, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over. Shall men give into your bosom? For with the same measure that ye meet withal, it shall be measured to you again. So, ang Panginoon ay hindi talaga matatalo sa bigaya. Kung ikaw ay nagbibigay sa Panginoon, ang Panginoon naman ay the more na nagbe-bless sa iyong buhay. So, ito yung principle sa living a godly life. Make it a habit. Eight habits of a godly man. 